Good morning, everyone. It is your daily crypto news. This morning, Adam Back, he tweeted $100,000 by having day. People are starting to believe. Bears. Leverage shorts wrecked. Scared off. Profit Tate limit orders moved upwards or just deleted to wait and see. Over the counter decks are running out of coins. Daily, $500 million, $10,000 Bitcoin ETF buy walls. This can gap upwards quickly. 51 days to go until the halving. Is Adam back correct? Will we see $100,000 by halving day in 51 days? Well, when I wake up this morning and get an alert that Bitcoin hit 59000 I get downstairs, make my coffee, check my phone. It's at 60 And then sit down to make this podcast. It's at 61 Maybe it's possible. I opened up stats.bitcoin and looked at the cycle repeat chart. The cycle repeat chart is a chart that tracks Bitcoin's price, calculates it to what we're seeing today, to what we saw in the past, to other tops in other halvings, to what we could predict in the future. They just upgraded their new Bitcoin all-time high to $509,000. Do I think we're going to get there? I have no clue. But are we going to 10x from here? I don't know about that. But you never know. You never know. Well, even though I don't know that, I can tell you right now what the White House is thinking about. Watcher Guru tweeted, Just in, the White House says, Bitcoin mining puts significant strain on the power grid. And this is from Fox Business. Out of all the things the White House could be weighing in right now in the world, the White House is weighing in on strains on the power grid. Let me tell you what I think. I think that if we are worried about our power grid, we should be investing in the infrastructure. What do you think about that? We will always need more energy as a society, as a human race, as a species. We're always going to need more until we get to that type one Kardashev level or that type two. We're always going to need more power to do the things that we're going to be doing. And you can't just put out a statement that says, oh, well, there's going to be a strain on the grid because of X, Y, or Z. Remember, Bitcoin and gaming are using about the same amount of energy. Nobody at the White House is putting out a statement saying like, hey, let's uh, confiscate and let's worry about all those PS5s and and everybody playing Minecraft or (laughs) anything because it's ridiculous. You need more power. And if our grid is strained, which is what they said about EVs, can we invest in infrastructure? Okay, that was my little, little rant. I got an email yesterday from Arlene who is listening to the show. Thank you, Arlene from Canada. She said, I recently started listening to your podcast to learn about crypto investing. We are a new show, not an investing show, but I appreciate you. I think now is time to get started. I'm not young, and I'm not really tech savvy. I'm in Canada. So you may not know the answer to my questions, but I'm hoping you might be able to point me in the right direction. I'm reading I need a wallet to get a key and a trading platform of some kind. I see that there are many different kinds of trading platforms and wallets. So my question is, If I was starting out with a trading account, say Coinbase, do I need a wallet of some kind first, or can I create a wallet later? Do you have a good website or a YouTube video that you would recommend for me to learn how to do this? I've read quite a few articles and watched videos. They seem to be inconsistent with who they endorse, and don't really give us every detail of how to set it up either. So very confusing for an old lady. This is one of the hardest questions to answer, Arlene, and I'm going to be very, very straightforward with you. Um, Use Coinbase. This is advice. Just use Coinbase. Coinbase has not had many major hacks. Uh, They are a very tried and true company. They're publicly traded. I don't want to say that I trust them, but I trust them more than any other company at this point. So if you're going to connect your bank account, if you're going to buy some Bitcoin, just set up a Coinbase account, have them do your KYC or know your customer AML, anti-money laundering, which means you're uploading all of your information. If it's your ID, if it's your address, if it's your, I don't know if you have social security numbers there or equivalent, but some kind of uh, state ID number, you're going to need to give them all that information, connect your bank account, and then you'll be able to buy some Bitcoin. Just stop there. As much as I want to say, hey, not your keys, not your coins, have a key, have a wallet, stuff like that. But if you're not tech savvy, don't do it. Stay in Coinbase. Don't try to send your cryptos other places. You're buying this because you're trying to buy an investment. If you really believe in the ethos of sovereign money or decentralized currency or a deflationary currency or a cap supply, unlike you know our fiat currency where our governments are just printing money whenever they feel like it willy-nilly, if you believe in those ethos and you think that having Bitcoin on a wallet that nobody can control but yourself is very important, 
that is a rabbit hole that you need to walk down very slowly with somebody that you trust exclusively. So I assume the reason why you're doing this is because you want to get into, because you said in the first line, learn about crypto investing. This is an investment. This is something that you want to do because you think you can make money off of this. Use Coinbase. Please don't try to do anything crazy with wallets. I, as much as I want to say, control your old keys. If you're doing this for investments, please just use Coinbase. Connect your wallet. Buy a little bit here or there. Don't go crazy. Don't put all your money into Bitcoin, please. This is not financial advice. My obligatory not financial advice, but this is advice as a human to human. It's very tempting to see the FOMO and say, oh, if I just bought at 40 or 30 or 20 or $10,000 Bitcoin, but it's at 60000 today. I can't predict the future. Just be careful. Do not get scammed. Do not click any links that you don't know. Do not listen to other people. Do not take phone calls. Do not let anybody even know you're buying crypto. And don't gamble away any money that you can't afford to lose. If this is your, I don't know how old you are, if this is your social security check, if this is your pension, if this is a fixed monthly income, do not put in more money than you think you can deal with month to month. And if you lose that money because Bitcoin starts at 60 and it goes down to 30 and you lose half your cash or even more, please make sure that you're going to be okay. This is the only advice I can give you. But if you're not tech savvy and you're confused already and you don't really know what these wallets are, I can tell you right now, stop there. Don't even consider it. Unless, like I said, you feel that it's so important to hold your own Bitcoin because you feel that the government is going to take all your money, the world's burning down, and Bitcoin's going to be the last savior of any kind of form of civilization and commerce in the future, I would say just use Coinbase. And of course, there's Bitcoin ETFs. If you don't trust yourself to store your password safely, to use two-factor authentication on your Coinbase account, make sure that you always have access to your Coinbase account, then i I would call your bank and I would ask them or find a bank that can invest in a spot Bitcoin ETF, which is going to give you exposure to Bitcoin. Therefore, you have your bank, you have a branch that you can go to, you have maybe somebody that you can talk to. So again, if you're not tech savvy, now that we have Bitcoin ETFs, and I think you have one in Canada too, uh, that's a way for the average person to get exposure without dealing with the tech. So consider that as well. Moving into some more news. After nearly a decade of a development, which Apple has never openly acknowledged, they're giving up their plans to design and build an autonomous vehicle. And they're moving a substantial part of those resources to their fast-growing investment in artificial intelligence. This to me sounds like FOMO. We heard this news from Mark Gurman. And he said that nearly 2,000 employees that were working on the car project, Project Titan, they called it, and it was housed under Apple Special's Projects Program, they were informed of the shutdown by Chief Operating Officer Jeff Williams and Kevin Lynch. Many of these employees on the team are going to move to the AI division. Just two weeks ago, the Washington Post reported that Apple's real-world road testing of autonomous vehicles had tripled in the past year, with 67 vehicles on the road, and they've covered around 450,000 miles. This is honestly very Tim Cook. Tim is moving Apple from innovation to products to actual physical things that you could touch to services like Apple TV and the fitness and iCloud and AI and maybe even a subscription service to a level of AI in your new iOS 18 or maybe on your Mac OS. It seems like a thing that's going to happen. Yeah, they're going to offer it as an additional maybe upgrade to Siri, but do you want the coolest one the best one the best ai you're probably gonna have to pay in a subscription for it and that after some r&d money is just pure profit after you get that up and running unlike the car which is going to have a bottom line that you have to cover unlike making iphones unlike making macbooks this is just huge margins very very tim cook this news might answer some of the questions that we had about Binance Nigeria shutting down. Last year, $26 billion worth of untraceable funds flowed through Binance Nigeria. And this is coming from the country's central bank governor. Nigeria is facing a foreign exchange crisis and is looking ways to limit outflows of the Naira. Makes sense. Makes sense. I don't know if you ever lived in a foreign country before, but most foreign countries... They have restrictions of people coming into their country, making money, and then sending it out. Uh, I lived in China, and me being an American, it was very hard to send money out of the country. Even for Chinese nationals, they could send more. It still was very hard. This is great for a country to keep resources within the country. However, it's very bad for sovereignty 
and freedom. Well, there's additional measures that they're imposing, not just shutting down Binance and making sure that people can't send money out. Well, they're also going to impose levies on expat workers. And Nigeria has imposed a mandatory annual levy of $15,000 for any directors that are working in Nigeria or $10,000 for other categories. A lot of foreigners are working in Nigeria and they are working in oil and gas and tech and telecoms and hospitality. Telegram is introducing an ad revenue sharing system for channel owners in nearly 100 countries that will pay in exclusively TonCoin. Telegram will split that ad revenue 50-50 with channel owners. Because of this, what do you think happened? Well, TonCoin went up around 30%. It was going pretty much sideways, and then boom, 30% gains overnight. Like literally, a straight green candle straight up 30%. Insane. Global investment manager Van Eck has launched an NFT marketplace and a digital asset platform called Segment. And that's S-E-G-M-I-N-T. And this is in collaboration with Nueva Tech, Delegate XYZ, MintTangible.io, Portals.to, and WalletChat.fun. Segment models claim to simplify the self-custodial sharing of digital assets, The process is akin to having a secure vault to store digital assets and issue keys to others, granting them shared access and ownership without compromising security, according to the firm. Sam Bankman-Fried. I haven't heard that name in a while. Actually, nope, that's lies. I heard it earlier this week because he had a because he had a picture in the jail with all his homies. Was his homie name G Lock? (laughs) <laughs> anyway, Sam Bankman-Fried has hired a new team of lawyers, and it's going to be headed by Mark McCassey. And this McCassey is going to represent him in the sentencing hearing on March 28th in Manhattan. McCassey has previously represented former U.S. President Donald Trump and members of the Trump Organization. This new lawyer and his team has filed a 121-page sentencing memo, saying that the possible 100-year jail sentence for Sam Bankman-Fried, you know, for frauding people and investors out of billions of dollars was grotesque and he's asking for only 6.5 years what are your thoughts on that ask let me know matt at dailycryptonews.net and finally in some news i guess because it's news and i'm gonna read it because why the hell not comedian and author and tv show host trevor noah he said that not buying bitcoin at the rock bottom prices was one of the biggest mistakes he's ever had. And he said this at Web Summit Cutter on Monday. I mean, we all have that regret. When was the first time you learned about Bitcoin? Mine was 2013. I remember it, and I've said this story multiple times. I was walking down the street in Shanghai, listening to Stuff You Should Know podcast about Bitcoin. And I said, Bitcoin's cool. Like, everything they said about it was really cool. <laughs> the, the the sovereignty, the idea of, of blockchain, what blockchain is. I went down the rabbit hole. There's a lot of things in China that I didn't do because I was in China. And not having access to a lot of different things in China as not a Chinese person. Also, not having access to the internet globally because you're in China. As everybody knows, there's the Great Firewall in China. I really didn't do much outside of China for a long time. And so I never actually felt confident investing. And I always regret that. Obviously, we all have those stories. I regret it. As soon as I moved to Taiwan, I don't know if you guys ever saw Independence Day. But when the aliens came to Earth in Independence Day, that ship that they had at Area 51, what did Brent Spiner say? He said all of the, because the doctor, he was the professor or the researcher that was working on the spaceship in Area 51 underground. He came out and said, as soon as they showed up, all this stuff started lighting up. That is kind of like how my phone was and my internet was when I moved out of China. Everything started working from Twitter to Instagram to Facebook to all of these different things. And these notifications started coming in. And I was like, oh, wow, this is the internet. (laughs) And that's when I started getting involved. I have those regrets. You have those regrets. Trevor Noah has those regrets. But I do take some offense to somebody being worth $100 million dollars. And saying, oh, I wish I bought Bitcoin so I can have more money. You're doing fine, Trevor. You're doing fine. That was another rant today. You got two rants today. Now let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And the time is 1046 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fear greed is at 80. That is officially extreme greed. By the way, Pepe. Pepe is up like 50%. Don't know why. It's a new meme coin. If you are aping into Pepe and 
you have invested in Pepe, good job. Take profits, not financial advice. Bitcoin sitting at $60,907, up almost 7% in 24 hours, 19% in seven. We crossed the $61,000 mark a little bit ago. We just dropped down a little bit. This, this is insane. Ethereum is number two at $3,350, up 3.2% in 24 15% in seven. Tether's number three. Binance is at 413, up almost 5% in 24. And Solana's at 112, up 4.3%. Running off the top 10, we have XRP, which is up 4%. USDC, Cardano, up 3.3%. Avalanche, up 1.5%. And Dogecoin is almost going to hit the 10 cent mark. It's up 1.8%. I'm going to take this all the way down to number 20 because I'm just curious. Number 11 is tron just get that guy out of here you know my opinion on tron chain link is number 12 up 4.3 percent polka dots number 13 polygon matic is number 14 up 1.8 percent it's at 105 if you guys bought the dip on that one good job because it did dip down back to uh, 80 cents for a while there and so you're up you know 30 percent or so so good job on that ton coins number 15 as we said is up like 21.6 percent now or still up like 23 or 25 percent in seven shibs number 16 uniswap is number 17 internet computer is number 18 bitcoin cash is 19 and litecoin is in the number 20 spot litecoin's up 1.6 percent in 24 or 10 percent in seven it dropped below the 20 number 20 spot i think it was number 21 earlier this week and it's climbing back up the total market cap is up 5% at $2.26 trillion, a Bitcoin dominance of 53.2 and an ETH dominance of 17.9. That was our show. A little bit long today, but I know that you enjoy it. So <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. And until then, happy hodling, everyone.